Good evening, everybody, and welcome to our panel talk today. Um, this talk is covering the topics of business, ICT and accounting. And um, we're delighted that you've decided to, to tune in today to, to join us on this. Um, I'll briefly introduce myself. I am Cleo Devaney and I'm the Marketing and Student Recruitment Manager at IT Sligo. Um, and now I'll talk you through our, our panelists today. So first up on the panel, we have Dara Fallon and Dara is the CSR and Communications Manager at Abbott. Thanks, Dara, for coming along because you're an IT Sligo graduate. Uh, we also on our panel have Lisa Flynn, who is a trainee accountant and very recent graduate from our Bachelor of Arts in Accounting. Thank you, Lisa, for joining us. And lastly, we have uh, Valerie McTaggart, who is our head of department in business. And so great to have Valerie along as well to, to give us an overview of a couple of courses as well. So I'll kick off uh, our talk will last about uh, 20 minutes. There's a Q&A box uh, available as well. So if you think of any questions as we're talking, please do uh, drop them in the box there and our team will, will answer them as we're, as we're going through the talk. Um, so Dara, just I'll, I'll start with yourself. Um, so you are currently working in CSR and communications, but I know you started off uh, with a degree in business at IT Sligo. Can you talk to me briefly just about kind of um, why you picked IT Sligo and the course that was available there in the Bachelor of Business? Absolutely, Cleo. So uh, thanks, thanks for having me first and, and foremost. Um, I think you know, like many students finishing school, I wasn't, you know, fully sure exactly the career I, I wanted to get into. Uh, what really attracted me about the business course in, in IT Sligo was the variety of, of the course. So, you know, experiencing a number of different modules uh, across all of business, you know, that was, that was interesting to me. It kind of allowed me to get a feel for what I would hope to specialize in later on in, in your career. You know, what I will say is that, you know, at, at no point was I fully sure exactly uh, where I was going to end up. And I don't think that's a bad thing necessarily. I think it's it's very good, but definitely I benefited from you know in that first and second year in particular, just having the the choice to bounce through a number of different modules, um, and you know eventually I, I ended up going down the marketing stream. But you know getting that experience in in IT was was just a fantastic way to do it, and I, I just really that approach suited me at the time. Um, so yeah, that's that was the biggest attraction. And then yeah, the Bachelor of Business. So I know it's available as a level six, a level seven, and a level eight. And you know, there is the option then to go into a specialism, which is nice. You can come in with the broad, as you mentioned, the two years, and then you can decide which stream you want to go to, whether it's marketing, HR, or finance. Uh, for yourself, you know, how did you find that? Did you naturally kind of level gravitate towards one or or what was the, the way your path? Yeah, I think you know probably marketing in my first year was was one of those uh, modules that just really sparked an interest in me. I, I think I'm you know I I am quite of a, a creative mind uh, when I think about it. So I think when the time came to make the decision, um, it was probably between uh, marketing and HR. Funnily enough, I ended up going into HR, uh, but before doing anything in marketing. But both of the both of those um, careers, you know, the skills are quite transferable. Um, I think, you know, just that, that creativity uh, was the piece that attracted me to marketing, but you're still learning, you know, about all the various different elements of the business. It's not like you're just focused solely on marketing. Um, so having all that going along at the same time as being able to specialize in, in the, the marketing discipline, uh, again, that was just, it's been really beneficial to me. Okay. And in terms of like your, your career opportunities then, so you, you would have graduated, um, were you thinking specifically like what what kind of from the course prepared you maybe for for your career going forward i know you said you've you flipped it to hr but but what what kind of would have pushed you down that route yeah it's you know it's a strange one i think probably i could have done more being prepared when i came out myself not not that the college hadn't prepared me i think you know when i come out and you know you're a business uh, with marketing graduate uh, there's a number of different you know areas that you can go into you know there's there's lots of sales there's obviously marketing communications jobs advertising jobs that's what seemed to be around at the time um you know i first when i was looking at some of these advertising jobs they did kind of look like like sales jobs you know you were trying to you know, get companies to buy space or, or advertising space. But at, at the end of the day, it was kind of very much communications, you know, in every role, there seemed to be this communications element to it. Um, 
And when I joined Abbott at the time, I didn't I didn't join Abbott, you know, on the back of, of my degree. I wasn't specifically working in an area that my degree had prepared me for. But all of the skills that I had learned in the IT at the time, um, you know, extremely beneficial. I, you know, I attest everything that I, I learned there to, to me getting my role now and, and all the different roles that I've had during my career. Um, definitely, I was prepared coming out of IT Sligo for you know, just across like communications, presentations, the, the IT modules that you complete. You know, I was definitely ready when I got to business. Um, so, you know, the only thing I'd encourage students, but it's in, in your third and fourth year, you just need to think, you know, a little bit more specifically about what you'd like to get into. That's, that's good advice. And I suppose it is those softer skills that, that maybe, you know, prepare people for work as well, like the confidence and, and presentations. I'm sure there was a lot of group work and assignments that, that simulate the, the working world, I suppose, in the college experience. Is that the, what you found? Absolutely. I mean, I can remember there's there's a few experiences at college that I remember in particular in, in first year um, and a few of the lessons that we learned just around software skills. Mr. Mugwini at the time, you know, preparing us for how to give a, an effective presentation uh, and the things that can and can't go wrong. But, you know, in, in any organization, the ability to communicate is going to be extremely important. The ability to collaborate, even more important. Um, that's then when you can kind of layer on some of your creativity skills and the fact then that you have an understanding of the business, uh, you know, for, from a marketing perspective, have always interested in, in human behavior and, and how you can impact on human behavior, you know, thinking create, creatively around it. But, you know, it all does boil down to, you know, your ability to, to communicate with others and collaborate with others because effectively when you come into any organization, that is what you're going to be doing. So, you know, focusing on that and so many different modules, so many different uh, presentations and projects that you're working on over the course of the four years, uh, like that really does prep you for, for when you finish. That's good to hear. And I suppose like just the, the degrees that we have, they have inbuilt uh, work placement opportunities for, for students. And I know you work in, in HR at the minute. Like what, you know, what do you find when, when you're uh, looking for graduate roles and um, people who have completed placement? You know, is, is there benefit there to, to, to completing a work placement? Yeah, so so I didn't complete one myself at the time, but we did have. Uh, I mean, our version was that we were working with a number of companies on specific projects. But you know, I've I've had quite a lot of experience working with work placement students, and you know, what I will say is that there's probably no more valuable experience than you'll get um, than a than work experience or work placement as part of the college. And it's fantastic that the the college has so many uh, such a great network uh, to provide the students with work experience. Applying your theory you know, in, into a, an organization and getting a feel for the organization. You know, it is great. You know, you can learn everything from the book and, and you, you can have your grow for it. But once you get into an organization and see how it operates and see how you can actually apply, you know, you're, you're not going to have a greater experience than that. Uh, being able to do it for three or six months, I mean, that's just fantastic for any student to be able to avail of uh, both the, the business benefits, but definitely the student is, is the main beneficiary of it because they're coming in and they can actually, you know, they may decide having completed, you know, a short work experience that maybe that is not the organization for them or, you know, I'm all in, I, this is something that I want to do. And, and that's exactly what that, that couple of months will do for them. Oh, that's great. Uh, th thank you very much for, for all your uh, feedback there. And I think that's some good advice there. You know, the, the practical learning that you can get as part of your projects, working on real world, world projects really does help students form in their mind, you know, what, what areas of, of interest and, and allow them then to pick their specialism. So thanks for that, Dara. I'm going to move on now just to, to Lisa. Um, Lisa, thanks for joining us today. So you are an IT Sligo graduate. You studied the Bachelor of Arts in Accounting. It's a three-year honours degree um, and you just recently graduated there. So I just wanted to kind of get your view on why you chose um, this particular route for, for yourself. Thanks, Leo, for having me. Um, I suppose I chose the accounting course at IT Sligo after attending the college open days and information evenings. Um, I got a real insight into the student life and the academic and social experiences students have. Uh, I also got to talk with some of the accounting lecturers and they gave me a real insight into the opportunities, many opportunities that studying accountancy could offer me. Also at IT Sligo, the classes are very small, which means that students get to benefit from individual help and support from their lectures. And with this counting course, students get the maximum exemptions from the CAP 1 professional exams, which is now a great benefit to me as I continue to train and study to become a chartered accountant. And I would also like to say that for students that are interested in studying this course, you don't actually need to have accounting or done accounting for the Leaving Cert as the modules are done from the beginning and they're done from scratch really. And then you build up from your knowledge over the three years. 
that's great. That really is good. And it's a reassuring, I think, for people to hear as well that, you know, you, you can come in at that level and still um, develop it into that profession. And in terms of like your what, what interests did you have in, in school? Like what, like what was there kind of when you were studying your leaving well, cert? Was there something that did kind of pique your interest in that way? I suppose I was lucky enough that we did do have accounting for leaving cert. So I did study both business and accounting. So I knew that it was definitely a pathway I'd like to pursue. And in transition year, I did a work placement in the local accounting firm Gilroy Gannons as well, which that kind of for me told me that that was a career I'd like to take. So that, that definitely helped as well. So just looking at the degree itself, um, there's there's a wealth of learning, I suppose. You you do everything, accounting principles, you've lo- company law, all those kind of things as well mm-hmm. to consider. Were there any modules that, that stood out specifically for you as you studied it? Yeah, there was two actually that stood out for me. That would have been management accounting and professional development for accountants. So I suppose management accounting, accounting looks at the long-term decision makings of an organisation and how managers use financial uh, information to come up with business decisions and I liked for that for that module itself I liked how there was a mix of in-class learning and we did computer labs as well which was great and we also in first year of the course we got to go to go on a field trip to Bushmills Distillery uh, which was really nice and we all I think that brought our class closer together as well Um, and then the other one professional development for accountants we done that in the second year of our course and that was to do with CV preparation and undertake, and we undertook uh, mock interviews with the local practice, Gilroy Gannon. So I suppose that gave me great confidence then when applying for, for jobs and preparing for interviews. So it's the mix of kind of the core skills and and then the softer skills as well yeah, that we definitely. mentioned earlier. Um, and then Lisa, just when, you know, accountants, uh, there's it's definitely a very uh, good profession to be in and yeah. there's plenty of demand. Like, how did you find it when you did graduate uh, or maybe even in your final year? You know, was there was there plenty of, of career opportunities out there for you? Yeah, actually, like I'm only after graduating in November and from my class alone, anyone who had applied for a job had got jobs before we even graduated, which is really, really good. Like we had all been offered jobs by February and we hadn't even sat our final exams, which was lovely. Um, And I suppose typically for graduates, they would usually go into a training contract for three and a half years with an accounting firm where they would complete the remainder of their professional exams. But I suppose it also opens doors for other careers. So if people want to go into, say, a career in teaching, there's also an option to do that as well. And you mentioned earlier that we have like the maximum exemptions as well for mm-hmm. the professional exams. You, you have a few different routes you can go down, haven't you, in terms of, of that? like? Um, yeah, so this particular course provides maximum exemptions from the CAP1 professional exams. Um, and that's... That means that once when I graduate, so once I've graduated now, I won't have to complete the exam exams. So I have fewer exams complete to become a qualified chartered accountant. It's definitely always happen. I suppose it's attractive for employers as well. Like yeah. it means that you'll be qualified probably quicker okay. as well once you you start working with them. Yeah. So so those contracts are, are attractive to them as well. And no no other IT IT or university has higher qualifications or exemptions than IT Sligo. Great, great. And just lastly, I just have a quick uh, question around your student life and student experience. You kind of did mention there that that you had some excursions, you know, and it was small class sizes. Did that did that work out well for you in, in your in your time at IT Sligo? Yes, definitely. I think the smaller class size is a size that made it so much easier to make friends. And I think as well the lecturers got to know their students on an individual basis as well. And they had a keen interest in their achievements and their well being as well. And it also, I'd encourage students as well to get involved in all of the clubs and societies that the college has to offer because I myself got involved with the Gaelic club. And I think it just made, I was able to make so much friends with different people from different courses and it definitely enhanced my college experience. Very good. Like that's, that's lovely to hear and, and best of luck with your, your um, further professional exams now. I know you obviously know. you have a very clear career path there. So um, yeah. yeah, it sounds like you, you've made the right choice for yourself. Um, thanks, Lisa. Thank I'll you. just move on now to uh, Valerie. Valerie, how are you today? 
Good evening, Keo. How are you? I'm good. So you are the head of department in the School of Business. Um, so that covers the, the, the courses we were talking today uh, about earlier, but also then I just wanted to talk to you more specifically about the, one of the newest courses we've launched within that department. So it's the Bachelor of Business in Business and ICT. So a three-year honours degree um, in that. And I think this is a fantastic course myself. Personally, I, I really love it when I look at the module. Um, having uh, done a business degree myself and, and had to go and do a postgraduate to kind of get those ICT skills. You know, it's great that somebody could actually do that now in, in three years in their degree. Um, so I just wanted to talk to you about kind of that course, how it's come about, what was the background uh, for it? And obviously, you know, business graduates need to be equipped with these kind of skills, uh, given where the, the, the market's at. So if you could talk to me a bit about that, Valerie. And then, of course, Cleo, and um, it's lovely to hear Lisa and Dara talking about the great experience they had in the Faculty of Business. So I'm, I'm delighted to see such successful stories here this morning. Um, and that's usually the, the positive uh, feedback we get from our previous graduates. The, the Bachelor of Business in ICT came about primarily, um, we do a lot of industry engagement. We engage with businesses right across the Northwest nationally and internationally. Our, our academic teams are multidisciplinary. They work with partners all over Europe and the globe and we kept um coming back with feedback that you know we need our business graduates to have a uh, core competency in ICT, information communication technology. That was the key driver. Every time we spoke to anybody or any time we looked, you know, trying to place our uh, students, as Dara said, there's work placement in the Bachelor of Business Level 8 degree as well. And it was, you know, we need students to understand the important role that technology plays, not necessarily to be a programmer, programmer because they're very technical IT skills, but to understand the role that technology plays and how it applies to the organisation. So really it was driven by industry and we are the first uh, IOT and one only the second university to be, soon to be university to have a program like this and, and it's an arts program um, because the arts obviously are very important in the context of business and ICT. Okay, that's great. Like in terms of what areas students uh, currently are interested in, is there a requirement for a student to have technical skills coming into the course or, or what, what would you say would their backgrounds generally be? Not at all, Cleo. I mean, we look at our young, uh, even children today, and they're very tech savvy, as I, as I say. So that that understanding that young people have of technology is unimaginable um, 10 years ago. So an understanding of technology, um, but you don't need to have specific technical skills per se, uh, because as Lisa mentioned, you know, you come into the IT Sligo and you learn those skills. You start at a bit at the, uh, we assume that nobody knows anything insofar as we build those skills. It's, it's kind of, we Build, it's building blocks of learning over the course of their programme. So the, the teams work very closely with students. We keep the class small. We certainly, um, the, the computer, computing classes, the labs, um, you know, 24 to 30 are usually the numbers. And then you have your acad um, academic lecture working with you. almost the software and um, the business so there's two streams with there's a business stream and an ICT stream and, and the two come together and in the business you it's a very if you looked at any business degree in Ireland we all IOTs and universities cover the same modules it's organizational behavior and um, marketing economics they're the core um, business uh, modules for any program regardless of whether it's IT Sligo or um, any university in the country so you do marketing um, and then we've added a, a few um, very interesting ones in students third year like digital transformation uh, enterprise which includes uh, sustainability and, and the important role that that plays so while we're covering very generic uh, business modules that all the universities covered, we've added our own nuances to it and modernized them and made them relevant for today, not just for today, but going forward. Because as my colleagues out there in, in you know, Dara and Lisa will know, it's all about future proofing your organization at the moment. And we have to prepare graduates that they're able to work in these very fast moving, fast paced environments. So we, we factor all those factors in.
it, Valerie, because it sounds like we've built a very modern degree program there, equipping somebody with the skills to actually go ahead and uh, take on a role in an organization that maybe doesn't even exist at the minute. You know, it's yeah. that kind of thing that it's your future proofing. These graduates are coming out in three years time and they're going to be ready with programming skills and business skills to really be an asset to a, an organization. So so I suppose those graduate opportunities, um, you know, you've said we've, we've engaged with industry. Are there particular industry partners that have kind of said, you know, this is the type of graduate we, we want it was, it was funny because as we were developing the po- programme, we spoke with industry partners and they said, how soon can you have these graduates ready? And, and we spoke from everybody from financial services to small, medium enterprises to um, I was on the call with one of the largest financial services providers recently. And they said, Barry, any sign of those graduates yet? And I said, no, we have to wait two more years. There is a real demand for business graduates to understand the role of technology. And these students will also have Microsoft accreditation, Google Analytics accreditation and the program is mapped to the teaching council of ireland so these students can do their postgraduate masters in education the same as any student would have to do and they could become business and ict teachers so that's a really important option for people as well Oh, it's fantastic to hear get the flexibility that it offers there whilst there is industry demand there's also that that route there as well which is a new route as well for for students yes. to go down um listen Valerie, i could probably talk to you for another hour about that course because i think it sounds yeah. fantastic um but uh we just have to wrap it up there um for today and look all of these courses are obviously available with the cao hub on our website and you'll be able to follow if you follow the department of business links you'll find out more information about all the courses that we we talked about today and hopefully it's given you a taster um, anybody who's listened in for what's available from IT Sligo um, on each of those courses and I'd just like to finally close by saying thank you very much to Dara, Lisa and Valerie for being part of the panel today and um, please do keep putting in your questions into the Q&A box there and we will come back to you with any further details that you're looking for so thank you very much everybody. Thanks Gail.